So what was that, uh, in the United States? What were we talking about at the beginning of this past week? What was everybody focused on? The eclipse, right? Uh, the partial eclipse. Or basically, all the country could see at least partial eclipse. And a huge amount of people, more than normal, could see a total eclipse. By raise of hands, how many people were able to travel and see a, the total eclipse? Total eclipse. Okay, so some there. They were see in southern Illinois, Indiana. I saw it too in Texas. Now, I didn't go there just for that. I was supposed to go there in Austin for a Bible conference for priests, about 200 priests with Scott Hahn, Berg, Dr. Bergsma, Dr. Shri. Um, and, uh, and then I found out like a month before this that that's going to be in the path of totality. So I want to get there in time for that. <laughs> and uh, so I did. And uh, amazing, uh, amazing experience. I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to see it because it was mostly cloudy the whole day. Um, and the sun would come out for like 15 or 20 seconds and then go back. But just before it was total, uh, it was basically clear over us for those four minutes, three, four minutes. And then right after that, clouds came again. So thank you, Lord, for, uh, for that. So trying to find like a picture uh, and even of a partial clip. So it was like that captures the beauty and, and, and you know, everybody is getting excited uh, about that. So I found this from NASA uh, on the, uh, t oh, <laughs> how that happened. That's terrible. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. So no, that actually was, all right. Here's the actual picture that I did not take, the picture that I found of the clip. So it was interesting. Um, my, my eye doctor's here. So let me just say that I did wear the, uh, uh, the glasses. I was wearing the glasses. I was, I was good about that. So I see the eye doctor somewhere around there. Um, but I did take them off. I did take my eye, uh, yes, because in the path of totality, you can take it off. And it's totally covered for that period of time. I was kind of scared because I was, you know, I just look at it for six seconds and look down. But just amazing to see, and like the corona, uh, the wisps around it. Here's, here's a video from one of our prisoners, uh, Timmy Keller, who took this in Indiana. Just 30 seconds here, ca capturing it just before it goes total there. He had a special camera for that. I took my own pictures, but they were bad, so you're not going to see those. So. But, and then a fast, we fast forward a little bit later. And so you can see that's the solar wind. That's a corona of the, uh, uh, of the sun there. And in more distinct pictures, you can see like solar flares and eruptions or whatever they're called, you know, from the sun as well. You're able actually to see, I was able to see stars in the sky when that was happening at 1.30 in Texas, and be a, lot, a lot of sun. So, for example, this is how I normally look at the patio that was watching this. That's 1.30. But 1.30 with the totality, it looked like this. Yeah, the lights had to go on because of that. I also found, because it was a priest conference, and they set up, it was starting that night, they set up the station of the cross outside. So on this patio, it's just me, and, uh, um, and I, I saw this, the crucifixion, Jesus dies on the cross. And I'm not sure if I've seen this before, but this depicts it totally dark, and you can see stars. If you zoom in more, you can see stars in it. And why would you see stars? Was it a night? except you can see the stars when there's an eclipse. So very interesting, very interesting there. What's come to my mind um, is what causes an eclipse of the sun, the son of God in our hearts and our vision? What obscures our vision of Christ? What obscures our, our belief in him? What gets in front of the sun of God. In the gospel, we heard about the uh, two disciples, and this is right after they did the walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which is about seven miles, and they didn't recognize Jesus was walking with them. They thought it was, it was somebody else, um, and, uh, and they couldn't see Jesus because of their unbelief, because of the lack of faith, because of their grief as well. They're allowing their grief to get the best of them. 
But then their eyes were opened when? When it said that with the breaking of the bread, what's that mean, the breaking of the bread? That's code language in the scriptures. Whenever you see that in the New Testament, the breaking of the bread means the mass, means the Eucharist. So when he did that, he was present with them in the Eucharist. That's why when he disappeared. Jesus is truly present with us now in the Eucharist and in a few moments on the altar as well. Our eyes are open only when we pray, when we give time to God. Our eyes are open only when we, uh, you know, when we come to Mass, when we experience His grace in the Eucharist. But oftentimes we get fixated on other stuff. Our sins, our sins can cover the Son of God. And, and weigh us down, and we focus on that. Or even, even not even sins, but just we get so fixated on the news, you know, we're on that so much, our devices. Um, we get fixated on uh, sports, uh, betting, stock market, stuff like that. And we give less and less attention to, to Jesus. Jesus also said this to the disciples. Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your heart? Go back and, and, and meditate on that scripture verse in Luke 24, 38 this, this week. Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Don't give in to the doubts. We can, you know, wrestle with our faith. Yes, the Lord wants us to do that, but don't then give up our faith just because we have some struggles. Let's focus on him. What did Jesus, for the most part, on the more, most important day of all time, the day of Easter, the day of the resurrection, the new day, new creation, what did he focus on for the most part on that day? On the walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus, when he appeared to them in the upper room, he said, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. It was basically a Bible study. We're going deeper there. So my question for all of us again is, how much time are we giving to the Lord in prayer, but also in the Bible, especially New Testament? Old Testament as well. We should never uh, not go over the Old Testament, but that could be tough at times. So we need a good uh, person uh, writings to help us to interpret, because otherwise, you know, it can be difficult. Have a good interpreter with you. Um, in your writings, but are we giving time to God in our prayer and reading our scriptures? Or are we giving our time to um, to the news agency, to our favorite um, uh, podcast person? You know, it seems like we tend to give a lot of times to politics, a lot of times to news, which good for us to be involved, good good, good for us to know. But then we give the Lord the last crumbs or energy of our time. And then we're like, uh, I love you, God. I'll, I'll try. I'll try tomorrow. I'll try next week. I know I need to do better. We need to give God the first fruits of our time. Because then we'll be able to see more clearly the things of this world. Are we making an impact for what we're doing here at St. Patrick's? Remember what our vision is? is to transform lives by making church matter, building disciples, and seeking and saving the lost. Are we making a difference? I would say yes. And so sometimes uh, it's good for us to hear a story because, you know, we, we have decided this past year, starting last May, June, uh, to uh, embark on a um, new phase in our parish to do a total renovation of the parish center and in addition, a new building attached to that because of our needs now and in the future, because when I want to pass on the faith to our kids and to our families. And so, but we are making an impact already. And, and so I, I want you to see this uh, brief a video uh, of one of our families on how what we have been doing here has impacted them. We are Nick and Katie Kowski, and we've been parishioners at St. Pat's for the past three years, and we live in Yorkville. Uh, when we first moved to the area, we had every intention of staying at our previous parish, where we had been uh, parishioners for the past 10 years. 
Uh, we decided one weekend to come to Mass here at St. Pat's because it was close to home. And uh, after that weekend, we decided to come back again uh, for the next couple weekends. What kept drawing us back was the vibrant faith community here at St. Pat's. We left weekend after weekend, uh, each Mass feeling uplifted, uh, connected. Father Matt's homilies really helped to drive home Thank the you. message of the gospel Thank each week. And we found ourselves talking about those things with our kids on the way home at the dinner table. And we really felt um, a new breath of, of fresh air in our own faith through St. Pat's. And that is something that we wanted more of. So as a family, we made the decision, which wasn't an easy one, to join St. Patrick's Parish, um, which meant leaving behind um, portions of our old parish. Uh, but it's thus far, it's been great. And we continue to grow and we continue to love St. Pat's and meet new people and are continuing to grow in our faith with those around us as well as our family. Community is really important to Nick and I in looking at different aspects of communities that we're involved in, being with people who have similar values and similar beliefs is something that we've found here at St. Pat's. Our children are involved in family faith formation. Each month we come together with our son Austin to learn about various aspects of our faith. CTN nights for our daughter Ellie have also been very meaningful and relevant to where she is in her life and her faith formation. She has connected with different friends through those CTN experiences and it's become also a part of her social connections as well. I think just to echo what Katie said about community, um, it, it's important for us when we move to a community to be a part of that community. And a church is a big piece of that community, especially here in Yorkville. And we've been able to grow in our faith, not just as a family, but with uh, parishioners who are now our friends. And uh, when you're able to surround yourself with people who have um, similar values and beliefs and morals as you do, it, it really helps all of us grow in our faith and grow closer to Christ. Um, that's been, to me, the best piece of coming to St. Pat's and continuing to be an active parishioner is really growing in our faith, not just with our own individual family, but with the community, with all of you. As parents ourselves, um, one of the most important investments we make in our lives is our children. And uh, being parishioners here at St. Pat's, being involved in this community has been a really important aspect of our uh, investment in our children and their faith formation um, and our individual growth in our beliefs and um, life as Christians as well. So it's been great for us. We look forward to continuing to grow in our faith. Thank you for welcoming us in three years ago. It's been, it's been phenomenal. All right. Well, thank you to the, uh, the Kempsey family for their witness there. Um, if you notice at one point, he said, yeah, it's, been, it's been great so far, so far. So, which, which uh, gets, gets me thinking, um, we can't rest on our laurels, right? We can't just say, hey, we're doing, we're doing a pretty good job. And uh, we always had to be growing, always had to be um, meeting the needs of our people now and in the future, because this is a growing area and people more and more moving in here, and we want them to find a faith community here. And so, um, so that's why we need to grow and, and, and develop. And so we did that feasibility study. Remember, it was last May, last June, and we showed you the results in uh, September, October, and it was resoundingly positive. The, uh, the, the, on the left-hand column is 66%. Just by making the case then said, yes, let's do it. Only 8% said no. 26% uh, said maybe, not sure. Um, but we heard more and more coming saying yes, and I think uh, you'll see as um, we're going to give you more details in a time to come. Uh, but remember, just briefly, uh, this is some reason for the uh, addition uh, for space and for uh, faith formation, alpha youth events, our, our, our groups, our ministries, and uh, our, our growing staff as well. We have a growing parish. You have a growing staff. And so those are just some reasons for that. For the parish center renovation as well gives you all those, those details for that. It's uh, served our needs, especially in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, but then we started to grow out of that. So now it's time to, to renovate and expand that. 
uh, we're pretty much on our uh, four to five year plan. We um, started some fundraising, but now we're gonna hit that uh, more there. And now is the design, development, and construction documents in the middle there starting to spring. And now it's getting interesting because we're going into details what this is going to look like. And even the past couple of weeks, after we had some, um, our, our Sunday visitor, our Catholic consultant, has some meetings with, with uh, some of our parishioners, some ideas that come from that. So we want to get even more ideas. And, and uh, so this Friday, anybody wants to come? Uh, we have uh, two opportunities for you for a uh, open house, um, uh, and it's at noon and at 7 p.m. So it's the same thing. So either noon or 7 p.m. You don't have to RSVP. You can, so we get an idea. We like to have refreshments, but you can just show up noon or 7 p.m. And interesting developments for the past uh, couple weeks there. We need to um, have God-sized plans for our parish for the future. Um, I really believe that prayer is connected to this. So the more that we put our trust in God, God will bless us in different ways. So at the end of Mass, I'm going to uh, just pray with you a, 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 a prayer. Um, I mean, I want to ask St. Joseph. I'm giving to St. Joseph. His feast day is coming up May 1st. We can start a novena today. We can do another novena when that ends and end on May 1st. But I ask St. Joseph, the worker, um, to help us in our building project here. We need his help to see clearly what God's will is. So let's put our trust in God. Let's not allow anything to eclipse the Son of God in our life, in our heart, and keep our focus on him so that we may grow as a parish. Amen? Amen. Amen.